So that's gotta be the best steering I've ever had on a project that I've built. All right, so welcome back to whatever part we're onto this thing. Now, don't click away yet. We're onto steering for this thing. I do wanna show you guys something. All right, so as you can see, the mower is absolutely beefy. Now we do need something really good to turn this thing. So this is everything we're going to need to give this thing steering. So I've gone through a lot of these cheap eBay steering racks uh, in the past. Now, if some of you guys are watching this and you're thinking I wanna add steering to something, pick up one of these. It's a Polaris RZR 800 steering rack. It is a left-hand drive, but I think we're gonna make that work. Now the listing did say electric power steering, but it does, it does move awfully easy. So the only reason why I'm showing you, you guys this is because I've had a lot of trouble trying to adapt to here, um, trying to find stuff that's all gonna work for buggies and things like that. And I finally found it, buy that steering rack, throw it in the bin and grab the uni joints off it. They're really beefy, they're good. They fit straight onto this. It's a 30 spline shaft. You can adapt heim joints to the ends of these if you really want to. I'm actually going to keep these joints. I was gonna put heims on there, but I'll keep those. This is everything we need. So let's chuck steering on that. First thing, engine's gotta come out. The only thing is, I didn't realize last time, is that we will have to cut this tube to get it out and I'll have to get one of those uh, boltable joiners to put it back in so we can still pull the motor out. So yeah, let's get that free and see where we can aim this thing. Forgot to mention, we finally have proper power in the shed too. I do wonder how many times this engine's gonna come in and out of this thing before we even actually drive it. All right, so got a bracket done for the steering rack. Now it picks up three, help, three bolt holes. We've still got two others to go, but we can do that later on. I'm really actually starting to stress out because this has really taken up a lot of room in the front and that differential I made for this is absolutely massive for the front. So I really don't wanna to have to get rid of the front wheel drive part of it, but I, I just don't see how we're gonna be able to squeeze it all in. Anyway, I'm quite disappointed. So we'll just see, we'll tack this in and, and we'll see how we're looking up the front. Four lights in this two bay, two bays and still not enough lighting. All right, so this is how tight the front really is. Now I can't move the rack any more forwards because it's gotta be in line. If I extend these mounts this way, we're gonna end up with truck-like steering. If I put them out the front, anything that we're gonna have is going to be smashed off probably because this thing is gonna get abused. So that's pretty much where we can put it. Engine can't go up any higher because I don't wanna lift the center of gravity as well. I wanna try and keep this thing lower to the ground. So we're pretty well buggered. Um, the differential, without building it, I didn't know. Like, you just can't tell with these sort of things. And just a better look in the front there. So the, sh the chain will have to come over the top somehow and back down. And our, our engine's pretty much going to be about five mil off this bar. So we're going to have not too much room there. So I'm going to have to uh, do a little bit of thinking and see what we can come up with. Just on a quick note, what's to say we couldn't just do the front as the rear, uh, the same as the rear? and run just a solid spool in the center. Cornering might be a little bit hard. Cars and cameras did it on their power wheels build. I'm not sure how that thing steers. All right, so I'll be honest, I'm a bit disappointed. I've decided to ditch the front differential. I filmed this a couple of times. I don't really know how to say it, but yeah, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna ditch it. We'll come back to it hopefully eventually in the future. We'll do like a 2.0 version. I really can't see any way of getting around this easily enough. Um, just with the amount of space, I never really took into consideration of how much this was gonna be. You know, it's all a learning curve. I feel like I owe you guys a lot more of a uh, explanation on it, but I, there's nothing we can really do at the moment. I'll, I've been building this thing, I'm getting frustrated. I just, I wanna get it out and, uh, and actually enjoy this thing. So let's just do the steering and see where we go from there. So these seem to be special spline, they're like 30, 30 spline or something. I wouldn't have cut that off um, if I didn't need it. I had this laying around with a steering wheel and I wanted to be able to utilize that with this. So that goes on there. So for now, that lower one we just cut off, we'll replace with a just a universal joint like this and I'll buy one off eBay, one of these, because they're pretty inexpensive. The stores wanted about 80 bucks for one. Now I've put as much angle on that joint as I want to if possible. 
Hopefully that'll still work there and we're just clearing the engine, so that's pretty damn tight. Alright, this might be a bit hard for you guys to see, I'll try and do my best. Oh yeah, that's it. Zoom in on that greasy goodness. Bit tricky because we've got nothing here to measure off, so we're going to use the old icrometer. So we've got this little adapter here. Now we need to make some type of bearing for that. I was going to buy a little pillow block. That was going to be like another 30 bucks and we'd have to try and hold it either end. So I'll have a look at what scrap steel I've got laying over here. This is why I don't like to throw anything out. Let's have a ravage through the old steel bucket here. See if what's going to fit. Try this is a bit of an old gal pipe I think I found out of the house actually. If that, oh. That's perfect. We'll cut a section of that up and put a grease nipple in it so we can grease this thing up and whack it on. It invites our tap to come in and have to take a seat. Oh, she's a bit in. Basic cut. that new J, it's thrown it out a bit. So this was the easiest way, using a little bit of box tube, just to stand off here, because if we use a bit of round tubing, it would crush it a little bit too much, I think, and we'd have to pack it out with washers and it just wouldn't look right. So hopefully this will fit in pretty good. So we've got a nice strong mount there. As you can see, it would have been a little tricky to try and make the mount internally and then space it out. So I think that worked out pretty good. You're never gonna see it anyway. So hardest part now of all is adapting up these tie rods to this shaft because they're two different sizes. So I've got to try and figure out an easy way to do that. So this just got a little trickier. This is obviously the tie rod that come with the rack. And when I'm turning it on, it is slightly bent. So I'm guessing when they've tapped the thread that they've tapped it on an angle a little bit. But anyway, we'll try and make this work. Done the old eyeball alignment to the chassis. So we can do some firing adjustments later on, but let's mark our length here. All right, so we've got a slight issue. You do run into this a fair bit. So this shaft's 16 mil, this one's 13, so three mil difference. Now our little thing here fits really nice, a little adapter, but this one doesn't. So what we're gonna do, build this surface up full of weld and then we'll machine it down on the lathe and that'll fit nice in there and we can square it all up and weld it. Oh yeah, I reckon I'll get that on there. Right, so we really need one of them welding trolley things that you place this on and it just spins around and you can weld perfect but that worked out all right now they are a small arm so they should be fairly strong now let's do that to the other side so there you have it both wheels done let's see how this thing turns let's fall up one way and the other way Oh yeah, 
So our inner wheel's turning more than our outer, which is really good. That's what we want. All right, let's get some tires on it. So chuck some grease in, and man, this thing steers like with one hand now. So that's gotta be the best steering I've ever had on a project that I've built. That squeak is actually coming out of the steering rack. So I don't know what's going on there. So it's a bit hard to show on this angle, but that's just what we're dealing with. There's not much room. off the list now i know i said this in the last video but the next video we definitely have to get the jack shaft and the drivetrain hooked up because then we can do things like brakes and the exhaust system and everything now it is a real bummer that that front differential didn't work and that really held us up for this video but we've thrown that out for now and we'll be coming back to it but if you've got any suggestions i'd really like to hear them down in the comments whether we straight axle swap the front of this thing like we've done in the rear or something Drop it below. Now, almost 90% of you guys have not subscribed to the channel or you do not have the notification bell on. So if you don't want to miss out on builds like this and you enjoy this content, definitely consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. Because who wouldn't want to miss out on builds like these? And that is how to add steering to pretty much anything. If I can do it, you can. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.